Chris Carter wrote the part, your part with you in yeah. mind. What were you, your initial thoughts when he called you about the role? It was kind of weird. He, he didn't say what it was for. He said he wanted to speak to me. So I showed up and he was very nice. And he said that his brother had been in holiday. I think it was his brother had been in holiday in Mexico. And one night, going out for dinner, he saw me walking along the street with a purple beard. And, and they just thought it was kind of interesting. And Chris thought it was great. And it put me in his mind. And when he was writing the story, I, he plonked me into the position. And it, it was uh, good luck for all of us. Did you have a blast doing it? I mean, it looked like it was a great was cast. The people were brilliant, easy to get along with. You know, David Duchovny is a great guy, funny. I spent a lot of time with Exhibit, and he's very funny, like a rapper is funny. <laughs> great. I, I spent a lot of time watching his haircut. I'd never seen a black man getting his hair cut before. I was watching it being done. It was a lovely time. It was had by all. But I read in an interview where you mentioned you enjoy playing characters that are spiritually adrift. People who are capable of anything, dark, anything, dark characters. What did you do to prepare for your role as Psychic Father? That was the thing. Chris said you'd be playing a pedophile priest. And I said, well, goody. <laughs> Dead. Would you like to meet some and talk to them? And I said, no, because there's, there's one thing I've noticed over the last few years on television, on documentaries and stuff, when they interview pedophile priests, they don't seem sorry. The one thing they don't seem is sorry. They're angry, they're various things. So he said, would you like to meet some of these pedophiles? And I said, no, because one thing from seeing them on documentary films, etc., the one thing I noticed about them is that they were never sorry. The way things were and they blamed a lot of the time to take this path. And I thought it was a real cowardly get out. And I, I was dying to play the, the guys with those opinions. And even just your expression when you're answering questions, just you, you don't need to go into the great detail of it. Pedophilia. Yeah. But even this, you just, you just need to be sly answering the question to get the atmosphere across. And it was a delight to do, especially with the actors concerned. My first scene was with Gillian Anderson. And, and I, it was a very long and difficult scene because I had to have a fit. And she has sort of revives me. And that was in contact. And she was very courteous with me. And it was lovely. We, we managed it great. And, and it was a joy to do. Do you, what are your favorite memories from working on the movie? Do you have any specific memories that stood out? Yeah, I, we were filming in a mental hospital in Vancouver, a Victorian mental hospital, the creepiest building I'd ever been in in my life. <laughs> and even Chris's big dog, big poodle, a standard poodle, was frightened to go in. It wouldn't go in the door. And I, I, I got in myself. And it was, it was disturbing to say the least. But during it, a guy from the Golden Globe turned up to present David Duchovny with his Golden Globe from the previous year. But he, I was sitting, we had just finished a scene. 
and David was sitting over here and this man was standing here and he put the golden globe on my head. Talk to David. He's treating me like a coffee table. I said, get out of here, what's your problem? And I, I, I buggered off in the half. But there was, the daily was stuff like that. There was, there was a joy to work with. What was that atmosphere like up in, I mean, Vancouver? It sure looked cold. You guys were there in the winter, I'm assuming, or? Was it was it... late summer. That was it late was... summer? <laughs> it was late summer. Wow. And it was, it was stunningly beautiful. Yeah. Trees 30 or 40 feet high where the leaves were solid with, with the cold and they would rattle off each other. It was just, just like those ornaments you have outside houses. It was the most beautiful. When the wind blew, the, the snow would flake down like you're in one of those. It was, it was just the most blessed place. It's a joyous place to be. And while we were there, there was a, an annual gathering of bald eagles. There was hundreds. I'd never seen one before. There was hundreds of them all over the place. Wow. Finally, it's a joy to work in American crews. They're more friendly, much more personal. Find out what you like. You say you like something, you get it for breakfast the next day. How long did you guys shoot up there? That was... Uh... I was there for about six weeks. What, what is it about the... Do you, what is it about the X-Files that you think people just keep coming back to? You know, you were part of the second movie. The show had been on for nine years. There had already been a first movie. Yeah. They rebooted it two more times. What is it about the show? Is it Chris Carter? It's definitely Chris Carter. It's, of course, it's David Duchovny and Gillian Anderson. But I think, above all, it's Chris Carter's vision that comes over. And it's, it's well worthwhile. It's, it's one of those shows that people love. They don't like it. They love it. They know when the star's birthday is. They know how many tears were on their wedding cake. They know what size shoe they have. They, they just... They, they become part of it. What was your favorite thing about working with Chris Carter? His, he, he shared everything. He, when he was doing a scene, he explained what he saw in it, how he saw it going and why, which is such a luxury. It, just to be told more information than you usually get is a, a great luxury. And it, it helps you to step into it. He, he, he's, he's a joy to work with. And it's, it's his fault that it's successful. What does it feel like to be part of the X-Files history? It's, it's extraordinary. Like this morning, I said to my wife, when's that interview? And she said, it's about half past two or something. And my daughter was with us and she said, what interview? I said, it's the X-Files thing. She went, oh! So she got well excited. And, and I, I, I tried to get all the names right. I said, get me the director's name and the, and the, the rapper's name exhibit. Get me all that. And she ran away to do it. She had no need to, to look up. She knew it all. <laughs> It's just, and she's my daughter. She doesn't behave like that about anything else. Maybe Muppets Treasure Island, but nothing else. I love because it was the way I came across it, him sending for me like that. I was summoned and I went. And, and when I heard what it was, I couldn't wait to do it. And then when I did it, I was so glad I had done it. It was just a joy. The people were great. They knew they were part of something very good. And it was lovely. We have, we asked, we've asked everybody from the crew and cast, 
um, in a different way. Nearly 15 years after your role as Father Joe, what is your message to the X-Files fans? Hang in there. It's worthwhile. It's the, it's, it tells the truth. The, if you, if you, you look at the, any of the subjects in the television series, from UFOs to whatever, the, the, the research is extraordinary. And they, they always hammer on the truth of it. The, 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 uh, the apparent truth of whatever they're dealing with. It has a reality about it. And it's a, it's a very worthwhile thing to be part of. You, you, you're not some kind of loony, you know, who's interested in a television show more than you should be. It's, it's, it's delicate and it's the real deal. And it's for readers. It's, it's for people who read 